So, good evening, everybody. Welcome to today's session. My name is Fatima, and I'll be taking you through one dress cookie concept. So, most probably, we would have came across the cookie consent while we are uh, while we were developing the website. So, basically, what is a cookie consent? It's more like an interactive banner between the user and the website. Which actually reveals some of the informations about the cookies that will be getting stored in the website, and a cookie consent is more like making the user aware of what all cookies are getting stored, and whether they want to opt in and opt out of the particular storage. So it came into existence where for the EU countries, firstly in 2011. Where uh, the EU the EU directives more like a legal act, which was regarding the use of privacy that allows the user to select, yeah, opt in, opt out of the cookies that are getting stored in the website. Later on in 2018, this cookie law was more like categorized into CCPA and GDPR. Uh, GDPR is more like uh, it doesn't have any restriction to a particular. Location, every country should be following it if an EU country is actually involved in using the website. That is how uh, the GDPR can be classified. And CCPA is more like uh, related to California residents, the people who are interacting with the banner. If and these particular laws should be followed completely for the Californian residents. So that is. CCPA and GDPR. I am not sure uh, whether you have uh, gone through these cookie concern laws because if we look at our website, we are using EU cookie compliance, which actually follows the GDPR uh, cookie law. It is necessary for a website to be compliant because if a website is not compliant, it not only induces legal actions but also for it, what it means for business is more like it will reduce the credibility of the website. It actually puts the user's information in risk. That might cause issues for the website interactions with the users. So it is necessary for a particular website to be always compliant. That is why we are actually uh, making our website more compliant and making the users aware of what the user cookies are actually being used and the, whether they want to opt in or opt out. If you have sp seen our website's banner, it actually provides us a privacy link which navigates to the privacy policy page, which gives us awareness of what all cookies are getting st stored. Uh, it also provides the privilege to accept the cookies or not. Plus, the EU cookie compliance module gives uh, it has a multilingual support and um, if there are custom cookies like uh, intraro cookies or anything it provides us functions like whether if this particular eu cookie compliant panel is agreed or not based on that particular function we could actually uh, set up the customized uh, cookies as well so it doesn't actually include all this. I mean, uh, it doesn't sum up what I said because it do have additional features, but uh, I'll, uh, we are the cookie compliance module that we are using. We will be uh, discussing about OneTrust, who is a provider of a better privacy management, a company which is a uh, a company which provides a better management for the software platforms. Like it actually is a centralized solution for the GDPR, CCPA, as well as other cookie laws that is uh, related to a user's privacy. It also provides various products like data management, data mapping, etc. Today, but we will be looking at the OneTrust cookie consent module that they provide us. Usually, they give us a privilege to select which cookie banner can be created. That means uh, I could create a banner for CCPA or I could create a banner for GDPR. So I'll be going through steps for creating a GDPR 
to be compliant banner. So these are the five steps that we'll be going for creating a GDPR compliant banner. That is first is scan the website. Scanning the website means that when we feed a particular domain inside OneTrust, it actually goes through each and every page and collects the cookies inside it and categorize it according to the pre-built categories that OneTrust have, OneTrust cookie categories that they have. And it also allows the user to see or to feed the uh, restrict the number of pages that that needs to be scanned, etc. So the, that is what basically happens when we scan the website. Second is like creating the template. The parts, one is banner and the other is preference center. We will be going in detail when we come to the second step. And the third one is related to this particular banner that uh, if I'm a user, I could have this opt-in option or whether a notice option uh, or opt-out option. Those kinds of consent models are introduced through geolocation rule. We will be going through each and every steps explained here in detail, but I'm just summing up, uh, summing up it up right now so that we could go by one by one. The fourth step is categorizing the cookies. When the first step is performed, that is uh, scanning of the website, the captured cookies is categorized, as I said, categorized into a self-built, a pre-built cookie categories, along with a privilege of creating customized categories so that we could uh, add the customized cookie that we have set for our website. So that, uh, that is the fourth step. And the fifth step is to publish the scripts. Publish the scripts is more like uh, integrating the script that gets evolved after performing all these steps and integrating it with the website that we have. So uh, unfortunately, we don't have a demo portal to show you all the fields and stuff, but I'll be showing you some of the screenshot that is actually similar to what the portal has. So the first one would be the website option. When we log into the dashboard, a uh, login as a user, this would be the first dashboard that we will be seeing. And in the website option, as you can see, there is a domain number of pages that have been scanned, the number of cookies that got captured, what is the geolocation tool that the particular domain uses, when is the next scan that is going to happen, and whether it is completed or not. If I have a website, Site called test.com. I just have to click on the add website option, feed the domain. You don't have to add the HTTPS, just the domain name test.com. And uh, there would be a field where we could determine the number of pages that needs to be scanned. If I leave it empty, the entire pages will be scanned. Like if I, if the test.com has nearly 15,000 pages, then entire pages will be getting scanned. But it is preferred or uh, recommended to minimize the pages, maybe to 500 to 600, so that almost all the category cookies get captured. Next option is more like geolocation rule. That doesn't need to be selected in this particular step. That is assigned in the third step. We will discuss it when we are going through geolocation rule. And this particular option actually gives us a privilege of having a a priority, setting a priority for a specific page that needs to be scanned. It also allows to have an optimized scanning that if I perform a scanning today, I can, I can set it up to uh, a particular period that when the next scan will be happening. So that also will be feeded here. Plus, if there is a subdomain, like if this we are smile.com has a subdomain model like trailing with vrsmile.com like test.vrsmile.com I don't need to add test.vrsmile.com because vrsmile.com will actually scan the subdomains as well if the pages are left empty so that is one of the privileges we get when we are having the scan the website option second step would be the template 
that the banner that appears for the users it is mainly divided into two if you can see that it is divided into banner and preference center the banner actually has if we look at eu cookie compliance banner it only has an accept button but for one trust it actually has three or we can customize it, change it into two that is one is accept all cookies reject all cookies and we have the privilege to customize the preferences like whether to opt in or opt out that is where the options comes like whether the categorized cookies other than the strictly necessary cookies where we can opt in or opt out so this is the banner templates they provide us with certain designs that we can use either to appear in the body show you some of the demo websites that we have which has different positioning of these as for more like the styling is also done inside the one trust itself so we won't be having anything outside the one trust the entire styling configuration scanning everything is done by the one trust itself uh, the next comes the preference center the second part of the cookie banner there this is where the opt in opt out etc whether the privacy policy details everything that that we list in the privacy statement page actually count the content comes inside the preference center which holds the categorized uh, cookies as well whether we need to opt in and opt out similarly like banner they have they also have different templates whether it should be in the side layout or whether it should be on the center and we can uh, customize it according to uh, the website's requirement plus it has a managed language banner and professional center also supports multiple language the additional feature is that we don't have to add content like we add in eu cookie compliance other than if we feed a english detail in the uh, english content inside the default and if i select another language the, in the language the content that is inside the default gets translated to that particular language that is an additional feature that we get by using one trust we don't have to add another content unless the client or the website requires an additional content that is provided this is the uh, options that we get for banner as well as preference center for styling and adding the content we can uh, add the styles it supports all the html tags etc and uh, style the entire banner according to how we need and plus the preference center also can be done with the same options if you if you see this override template styling that is more like if i have a, a template created for a particular particular website a particular domain and i can reuse it for as much as domains that i want if i have nearly 10 sites multiple sites and every every one of each one of these sites are using the same template and there are some minor changes for if any one of these we could go to the website option click on the website then this is the option that appears we will have that G, uh, gdpr template name here and we could override the styling as well as the content according to the requirement that we need that is an additional uh, privilege or feature that one trust offers third step is geolocation rule geolocation rule as i said it has a consent model the entire form is not uh, displayed the rest is in the next page i'll explain it later so here we will be uh, select selecting which template now i have created a template so here we will be selecting which template needs to be selected inside the geolocation rule uh, which all domains should use this particular uh, template what is the behavior of the template that is how the uh, banner should appear whether it should slide in whether it should pop up etc is uh, done in this particular geolocation rule plus if we close the banner whether it needs to be accepting all the cookies etc uh, are also done through this geolocation rule 
if you see that here it is a global region we haven't restricted it to it to a particular region and the concern model that i have selected is opt in opt in means that at initial point everything is selected i mean on every cookies are on unless the uh, user wanna uh, disable the cookies so this would be the default setup and if i go to the next slide you will be able to see the uh, behaviors that i said closing the banner or whether it is on click scroll or next page plus whether accepting all the cookies is more like whether if a click can make all the cookies to be accepted whether a scroll can be called what behavior that it needs to be appended there are two fields actually missing in this particular uh, form that is one is capturing the record of consent that field actually logs the record of consent that has been uh, agreed upon or uh, opted out etc the dashboard that we saw the dashboard that we saw actually holds a report of how many users have visited the site how many of them have opted it out how many of them have opted in how many of them didn't respond these all data are actually logged in and displayed in the dashboard so that is by using this particular fields that capture record of consent and we could there is one more field that is called unique site visitor where we will be able to to uh, see how the records needs to be uh, usually uh, it might be uh, id or something there are some options for it so that is how the records gets captured so these are handled through geolocation room the other tab that is assign domains help us to assign which all domains should have this particular geolocation tool if you see here you can see various region specified that this particular consent is global there is an eu which means that eu countries that 21st set of countries and ccpa that is a canadian uh, gdp other than gdpa law to feel so that is also can a particular geolocation group can have different types of roles and it can be customized accordingly the fourth step is categorize your cookies as i said one plus already provides you with a set of pre built that is these five ones strictly necessary cookies that are completely necessary for the website to perform performance cookies or uh, other name would be analytical cookie which is it's more like google analytics etc functional cookies target cookies like uh, facebook google ads social media or like social networking cookies etc so these five cookies are actually the pre built categories and we could add other categories according to what and cookies our website have the customized cookies so we could use the options cookie category and we could see the details that needs to be in the expand all this is available inside the cookiepedia as you can see there is categorization cookiepedia holds all the cookies that has been captured in the domain and it holds the details of the host etc so that is the fourth step and the fifth step is for publishing the scripts so the publishing the script we have two scripts one is testing and one for production testing actually ta is targeted for the testing environments like stage dev etc and the production is completely for the live these scripts vary uh, in the performance like uh, when we change the template or any other thing that like geo location rule we have to publish the script every time and if the if it is a test script the cache cache get cleared very fast and we will be able to uh, reflect the changes will be re reflected uh, as soon as we clear uh, sub, uh, publish the scripts but in a production script it might take a 4 hours delay if we haven't enabled the cache busters also the uh, this allows to these scripts have an html support where we will be seeing whether the lang value of the html tag is en or any other language and depending depending upon that the language gets switched so that is also handled through these scripts these scripts needs to be integrated in the head portion of the html and there are unique identifiers for identifying these scripts for test scripts it will have a training of hyphen test 
and for production script it would be more like a unique id so these are the two types of scripts that one trust has so the, basically this is the five steps and after publishing the script we could use a pre contract module to keep pro by one trust uh, to integrate this particular script inside the website that is a, more like a plug and play used so this is the basic steps and how the gdpr everything goes i'll show you how the live cookie compliance looks so as you can see this is a zoom a zoom dot us which we usually use it and if you see this is how their cookie banner has been styled if you look at this the preference center that is a powered by one trust it also shows us the cookies that are there in this particular website if you can see it is an opt in because it is already enabled we can disable it and customize it accordingly and approve we can add the content inside each of these cookies and whether it needs to be done or not we can reject the cookies here this is an additional privilege that one trust gives if i have rejected all the cookies and the banner goes it also provides us a preference and a pop up where we will be able to reconsider the options that we have given for the consent so that is uh, that is one of the features that uh, cookie banner one trust cookie banner provides us with so this is how the uh, one trust cookie banner looks for zoom if we go for the one trust main site this is how their banner looks if we go to the customized settings it's more like a side way of the preference center and it shows us the various categories that they have we the same button options are there also there's a cookie notice it's more like a cookie list if you have seen the images there's a cookie list option with the preference banner which is more like a div section we don't have to add content or something we just need to have that particular div inside it this gives you all the details of the cookies the description about the category see these are the cookies that are inside the cookie list and what all cookies are in the site etc these are everything that one trust provides us with and we don't have to add any additional content into it this is uh, a cookie banner designed for the tcs this is how their banner looks we have, they don't have a reject option but they do have a customize thing and if you look at this is how they have made this is an opt out consent as you can see ever except for the strictly necessary cookies rest of is rest of the cookies are in opt out options and by clicking on the cookie list it gives us what all cookies are there inside this particular site and this is how the tcs is cookie banner with one trust looks like and similarly this is how the loyalties looks so we saw the live implementation of one trust cookie banner after the scripts have been uh, published if we want to look at the unique unique id give me a second you could go for a one trust search and you will be able to see a script id specifically for one trust as you can see there is there are so many things related to one trust here so that is how the one trust works with so the highlights of this particular would be that there is an automatic scan categorizes cookies on a website it provides a better management of the cookies inside the website and lets the user know about how much cookies are there what are getting stored a better management of the consent plus it has different kind of geolocation uh, uh, rules uh, it holds the cpa as well as the gdpr and other cookie laws in a single umbrella it has uh, if if a website loses uh, the uh, i mean if, if a scenario comes like in any 
points, even if in the style, if there is not complying, the one trust cookie, the one trust cookie compliance module, let the user know that this particular thing is affecting the compliance. So that is also a useful uh, thing when it comes to the implementation. Uh, it helps to audit how many users have been uh, consented to these cookies. Plus, it has a lot of templates and pre-built styles that will be useful for uh, as a developer. It will be very useful, very uh, very much of an innovative idea. So these are some of the highlights of OP banner implementations. I hope you have understood how what is what trust and their cookie consent implementations. And that would be it. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Hi guys, thank you for watching. I had an amazing time learning all the new things here at Spec Beast Tech X. And if you did too, do let us know in the comments below. Keep following Spec for the latest trends in technology. See you in the next one.